As we gather again, we gather with our Easter greeting. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to Snohomish United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Janelle Kurtz and leading us in worship today, Jim Bolm on the piano. Tom Lafferty will help us in our singing together. And Linda Heaster is our liturgist who will help us to hear the word of God. We hear that together with all our hearts and spirits united before God in worship. And so we come to this space together with our prayers and our praise to meet the living Christ. Today we will hear a scripture that offers us a word of comfort. It is the promise that Christ goes before us, prepares a place for us, and will bring us again into that place. These are words we often use uh, or hear read as part of funerals or memorials, a word of comfort, a word of promise. And we hear them today and remember that that comfort and that promise is for our lives here and now too. So I invite you to listen for that. There are a few announcements you can see on the back of your bulletin of ways that we extend our worship and community beyond this time that we have together. In the narthex there's already there are sign up sheets for um, participating in our pride events as well as sign up sheets for the women's uh, spring tea which is coming up so i invite you to attend to those and uh, you'll see um, additional ways in which we are the community together but now we are the community together in worship and however it is that we worship together you are invited to worship in the way that is best for you. At this point, I invite you to rise in body or spirit for a call to worship. In times of trouble, God's people have prayed, saying, O oh Lord, you are our refuge and strength, our rock and our redeemer. Their prayers are an act of faith, declaring God as the source of their being and life. We declare the same faith, for God is our refuge, our way, our home in the world. Come then, all who search for a place of peace. Come, all who need a place to belong. In God's house, there are many rooms. This is one of them. This is a place of belonging, of welcome and peace. Come, give thanks and worship. Join now in our opening song, Come Christians Join to Sing. 158 in the hymnal, and it should be on the screen as well. Let us sing together. Oh. 
Please continue standing if you can for the opening prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. God, who is our way and our truth and our life, we give thanks to you. You are our rock, our redeemer, the one who raises us to new life. Through Jesus, you showed us how to live as people of the way, wherever we are, here and now. No matter where that is, we find our home and our belonging in Christ's steadfast love, and it is a gift of grace to us. Teach us again how to extend that sense of belonging and belovedness to everyone we meet, for we remember that our call is not just to follow you, but to work to widen the way that leads to life for all creation. Amen. You may be seated. And do we have some children? At this time, let our children come forward, yeah, yes. Our children. Oh, there they are, okay. <laughs> Good. Good morning, come on up. You're wearing, Maria wore her holy pants to church today. Isn't that great? She wore her holy pants. Uh-huh. I love it. All right. Well, good morning. How are you guys today? I'm good, thanks. We have some friends not here, some other friends who are in the back with us, but good to see you today. Today I wanted to ask you, I'm going to ask you something, and maybe it's, going to, it's kind of hard to think about. Has there ever been a time when maybe you were worried you didn't fit in or didn't know where you belonged or wasn't sure where your place was? Yeah, have you had that? You can remember a time like that? You can remember a time like that? Me too. I remember it. It still happens sometimes, but I remember it, especially if I was going on the first day of school and didn't know someone in my class or when we would go into the cafeteria for lunch and I didn't know where I had to sit or where my friends were. Ooh, that was one of my least favorite moments. I always felt a little out of place. But you've had times when you felt out of place. Congregation, have you had times you felt a little out of place? Yeah. And it, it's a hard feeling. And this morning, we're going to hear a story in the Bible where Jesus tells all of his followers, all of his friends, he says, there is a place for you. And it is already ready. They say, God's house has many rooms. And there's one that has your name on it. Well, he doesn't say there's one that has your name on it, but he said there's one that's ready and it's waiting for you. And I've gotten it ready. And I'm going to make sure that you're able to find it and be there. And so I like this passage to remember that we always have a place of belonging. And when we come here in worship, this is one of those places where we belong. Even if we don't know everybody's name here, when we come and worship together, we say that we belong together before God. And so even if you're feeling out of place or feeling lonely or left out or having a hard day, you can come with your having a hard day feeling here and you'll meet other people who have compassion and kindness and love who will help you find a good space to remind you that you belong. I think that's a really important thing. And so also when we have the, our communion meal, you know, on, you guys are old pros at this. You know what we do on communion. Mm -hmm. On communion we come. So communion Sundays we stay in church. Uh, and other Sundays you'd have Sunday school, but today we'll stay in church and you'll receive the communion meal. And then we take it and share anything that's left. We take it outside and share it with the birds, with the creation, with the earth. Because it's a reminder that all of creation, all of the people have a place of belonging. That's why, too, when we come in this church, when we come to have communion, anybody who wants to know God's love can come. Some place, sometimes you don't have to, like, sign in first. You don't have to bring me uh, a... And a, a report card. You don't have to tell me how good or, or bad choices you've made this week. You just get to come and receive God's love in this meal. A reminder that we all belong and there's room for us. And hopefully that'll get rid of some of those 
other not so good feelings when we feel left out. So we say a prayer with me today. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, thank you for a place for all of us. We know that it's not always fun to feel left out and you offer us here a place where all of us can belong together. And that can help us to feel more loved. Amen. All right, thanks so much, Maria Lucas. We'll go ahead back. I'll have you worship with your families. In today's scripture reading, Jesus teaches his disciples about the unity of God the Father and Jesus the Son. He tells his disciples that those who follow him will live as he lives and will find a place of belonging in God's kingdom. Hear this reading from the Gospel of John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you do, still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. These are the holy words for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, for there are many rooms in the Father's house. And look, look, I go before you and I prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, then I will return and I will bring you there myself. These are the words Jesus gives to his disciples to comfort them. He is getting ready to say goodbye. To them. Now it's already been a long journey. The disciples have been with Jesus through his teaching and his ministry. They've journeyed with him from place to place. They've witnessed signs and wonders. And now they get to this night. And this night itself has already been long. By the time Jesus gets to these words, he has shared a Passover meal 
He has knelt to wash the disciples' feet. He has warned of Judas' betrayal, of his own impending death, of Peter, who will deny him. And just as the disciples are shocked, wondering what happened to the celebration of Passover with all these doom and gloom warnings, Jesus gives them these words of comfort. And he will go on to say a whole lot more as he prepares to say goodbye to them. I think of this, I know a few of you will understand this reference. This is a Midwest goodbye. A Midwest goodbye is long, my friends. A Midwest goodbye can last like up to an hour. You say, well, and you hit your knees, and then you stand up, time to go, and you say goodbye, and then you individually say goodbye, and then you stand at the door, and you say goodbye there for like 45 minutes. And then you get to the driveway, and you say goodbye there for another 15 minutes. And then you go, it really is getting late. And then hopefully, hopefully you've timed it just right, or one of the children will say, I have to go to the bathroom, and then it starts again. It's long. Jesus' farewell to his disciples is very long. It's another like three or four chapters in John. Almost a quarter of the gospel is Jesus saying goodbye to his disciples, helping them to know what it is, how it is that they can live beyond this time. But before he does that, he begins in the middle of all their shock and all their awe and all their wondering what will come next. And he gives them this promise they can hold on to. He says to them, see, I go before you and I prepare a place and I will bring you there myself. There is a room, there is a belonging for you that will not ever go away. It reminds me a bit in this context of the disciples amidst all their shock and their awe and their grief and their uncertainty of this night. It reminds me of a compassionate parent pulling a child in close, saying, it's okay. See, it will be okay. For you who will deny me, for you who will betray me, for you who are troubled, it will be okay. There is a place for you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. See, believe, I go ahead and I prepare it, ready to receive you. Of course, many of us who have ever been fearful, who have ever been troubled, who have ever been new in a place, who have ever had that uncomfortable feeling of not knowing where we belong, we know that it is not an easily soothed experience. We are not often easily calmed down. Isn't there that joke that no one has ever calmed down because you've said, please just calm down? (laughs) And yet sometimes, sometimes if the person who says it to us says it in a voice of compassion and care and one who we can trust that they are real, it is real when they say it, sometimes it does bring us some comfort. I can imagine all the disciples there, though, voicing their own anxiety, voicing their, how can we calm down? How can you tell us it will be okay? When it is Thomas who voices the question, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know how to get there too? What do you mean? Thomas is asking the real questions. How can we calm down? How can we know it will be okay? How can we know we'll get to the place where you say we will get to? If only we knew the plan. If only you could give us the GPS coordinates so we could plug them in and follow you turn by turn to where we get to. Maybe then our hearts would be a lot less troubled. There goes goes so-called doubting Thomas being oh so relatable again. Asking the human questions we all have in our doubt and in our trouble for a way forward, for a plan, for a glimpse into the future, for a certainty it will be okay, for a crystal ball that tells us it will all work out in the end. We long for solutions, we long for a sense of control, we long for a sense of certainty. We want to know the how and the why and the what's next questions. We want to know the way forward to this place Jesus says he is going. 
And Jesus, again, so full of compassion, pulls the disciples close, answers Thomas's question. But of course, he answers it in a way none of us expected. He does not give them GPS coordinates. He does not give them a timeline. He does not give them a map. He responds that he himself is the way. The disciples asked a question about like how and why and what, and Jesus answers with me. A person, a relationship, a way of love, a way of being in the world, that the love of God is in him and he in the Father, that there is unity, that all who share in the same holy love, that is the way. Wild as it seems, we become people of the way, the truth, and the life for simply living in that relational way of love and those commandments Jesus has given the disciples. A way that often is used to make salvation seem small and narrow, this verse about the way, the truth, and the life, none come to the Father except through me. It's a radically wide invitation for his closest friends in their time of trouble to know it will be okay. It's an invitation to remain in love and remain together with one another. The work has already been done. Stay in it. Through the trouble, stay in it. For I am the way that will lead there. It's not up to the disciples to free their hearts from trouble. It's not up for, to the disciples to figure out every next step to answer every why question. It's up to the disciples to stay in the way of love that Jesus has prepared for them, the way that leads to truth and life. Philip asks for more proof, though. Again, not easily soothed. He says, if you'll just show us the Father, that'll be enough for us. To which Jesus, essentially, he does this with more tact, but I imagine him just gesturing widely and being like, all of this, look around, this is evidence of God the Father and the way of God. The breaking of bread together, the sharing the meal together, washing each other's feet, the commandment of love, this holy life that we share together, the wonders and signs of miracles and healings and all of this. All of this is what God the Father looks like. If they will stay in it through all that troubles them, if they will stay immersed in the love of God and the love of Christ, the way will lead them forward. I imagine this passage, the very beginning, believe in me, believe in God, believe also in me, it's an invitation for the disciples amidst all that troubles them to surrender into the loving embrace of God around them, into the community gathered where holy meal is shared, fellowship is had, healing happens in community. It is an invitation to surrender to that. This week, while I was reflecting on this passage, I began to remember uh, an experience that I had. About 15 years ago, I went whitewater rafting for the first time. And I went with my dad and I went with my brother. And there is a lot of work that goes into whitewater rafting before you even get into the water. Some of you, some of you must have done this because you're like, yes, there is. I mean, it starts with like, here's, the, here's your life vest, and here's your helmet, and here's your paddle. And then there's all the commands like paddle hard, paddle left, paddle right, duck down, everybody out. No, that's not really, I don't think one of them. But there's all these instructions. <laughs> there's all these instructions. And there's all this work, and there's all this practice. I mean, we practiced paddling in the air before we even got into the boat, where we then paddled on the water and still waters. And the guide spent a long time just telling us that he was qualified so that any of us who were anxious about getting into a boat with him would know it would be okay. So just the time that we're all feeling ready to go, then he gives us, he says, oh, by the way, and if you happen to fall out, here's what you do. Head back, feet up, float, and hold on. Okay, that's it. Head back feet up, float, and hold on. 
we'll get you, but that's what you have to do. Well, of course, we were like, well, if we happen to fall out, and he's like, all right, everybody into the boat. And we're like, wait, 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 more questions. But OK, everybody into the boat. And so we went. And for a while, I thought I was all good. I was ready for it, ready for anything that was to come. Put in all the training, the hard work, the hour of listening to everything to be ready. We practiced in still waters, and then on we went into the rapids. And all I could imagine when I was thinking about this passage was all the hard work the disciples had done in their life together, in journeying and following Jesus. I mean, they had practiced the commandments. They had learned from Jesus' instructions. They were ready. They were going out and about as teachers, as healers, ready to do that same work. They were in the boat doing the hard work. And then suddenly Jesus tells them that he won't be with them forever. And there was a moment when I was rafting where on the very last big rapid, the river like dropped out from under you. You couldn't even see it, but there was this great big drop at the end of it. And I imagine the disciples, when they are going along just fine, I imagine when Jesus tells them that he won't be with them always and begins, he slaps his knees and says, Welp, gotta go. When he gets up to start his long goodbye to them, I imagine them like the river dropping out from under them. When the river dropped out from under me, I spilled out of the boat. I was the one that if you happen to fall out, I fell out. And for a while, or what felt like a while, you know those moments that are always suspended and feel longer than they are. For one of those moments, all I could hear was my dad and his loud, anxious cry. And all I could hear was the churning of the waters and my own frantic thoughts. And then finally, through it, I heard the guide calmly, gently saying, head back, feet up, float, hold on. And I assumed the position. It's a position of surrender, right? Total surrender instead of fighting against the water. And before I knew it, there was an orange life ring that had already landed on my chest. And hold on. So I held on. And they pulled me in. And I imagine when Jesus says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. He is inviting them, despite all that is anxious and all that is swirling and all that is chaotic, head back, feet up, float and hold on. For see, I have prepared a place for you. Rescue is already underway. The life ring is already coming for you. Hold on. Surrender into the love into the promise. That's what I imagine these words of compassion, these words of comfort are meant to be. An invitation that belief, believe in God is not about the right answers. It is about a way of surrendering into the embrace of God's love. Head back, feet up, arms out, hold on. Because rescue is already assured. There are many rooms in God's house, and they are already ready, waiting for you and for me, for the good shepherd. The one who will lead the sheep is also the green pasture where they will find their rest. God the Father, Christ is guide and river both carrying us along. The leader, the redeemer, our rescue in times of trouble, the way, the truth, and the life, the water that gave us our birth, and the waters that will carry us into new life beyond this one. So my dear friends, my dear church, do not let your hearts be troubled. Head back. Feet up, float, hold on. Surrender to the one who is the way. Hold on even now to the one who is taking you to the Father's house and will not fail to do so. Amen.
this time I invite us into a hymn of response. Ah, Womb of Life, number 2046. It's in the Black, the Faith We Sing books, also on the screen. I invite you to stand as you're able and sing. If you're singing from the book, this will be a different but familiar tune. be seated. Pastor and poet, I reference, oh, I don't know what is happening. Pastor and poet Steve Garnis Holmes writes this, Christ, I don't come to God beside you, but through you. You take me into yourself, and I come willingly. You take me in, and I become part of you. As I take in your bread, and it becomes part of me, I am part of the life of love, the love that is the way and the truth and the life. I surrender my resistance and allow you to love me. This Holy Communion meal in which we share is a way in which we remember we are part of the body of Christ. When we come and receive this, we allow any resistance within us to be surrendered, that we might experience the love of Christ in full and seek to be people who live in the love of Christ in full wherever we go. As Jesus teaches, there are many rooms in the Father's house, and there is one for everyone. So it is, as I said with our children, the practice in this church that all who are, all are welcome at this table. Any who long to receive God's love are welcome to hear. It's our practice that we come to this table in a time of prayer. We begin with a prayer of confession. It's a release from all that keeps us from Christ. 
a surrender into the holy mystery of God's grace. And so, my friends, let us pray. Holy God, who gives us our birth at the time of creation, and who in Christ still bears us along to new life over and over again, forgive us for the ways we resist you. Forgive us for the ways we resist your invitation to love one another. In our fear and shame, we have not loved fully. You are the one who offers us release from sin and shame and fear. Help us to learn to let go of them too, so that we, the church, can be your living body throughout the world. Give us the humility to say we are sorry and the courage to learn and try again your way of forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace. Hear now these, the private prayers of a confession that we name before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We are confident in the prayers that we offer, for we believe in God, the one who is the way, the one who is the truth, the one who is life who has gone to prepare a place for us. This good news never ends, and so, dear church, hear it again. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, I invite you to turn to those nearest you and offer a word of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. We rejoice with glad thanksgiving as we come to receive again God's love in this meal. We give thanks and we pray. The Lord be with you. and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you holy god womb of life you have borne humanity and creation into new life throughout the ages giving words to prophets wisdom to teachers courage and compassion to rulers and love to saints of every generation though we at times resist and turn away you are steadfast bearing new life through instruction and covenant by water and the Spirit and your oneness with Christ in the church. We praise you and we are grateful and join all creation in its endless hymn of praise. Oh, God. 
are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who emptied himself into human form to bring, back, to bring us back to you through his teaching and healing, his life, his death and resurrection. He proclaimed that the time had come for your saving ways to be revealed here and now and for the life that we await beyond death. One of his final gracious and loving acts on the night in which Jesus gave himself up, he took the bread and he shared it with those who were with him and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup and he blessed it and he poured it out and he shared it and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for many in the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this often in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy sacrifice and union with Christ's sacrifice for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O Lord in the highest, O Lord in the highest, O Lord in the highest. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and all who will receive them this day. Make them be for us the body of Christ, that in taking them we would be the living uh, testimony of Christ's love alive in the world. By your Spirit, make us one with you, one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until that day when Christ comes again in final victory and the kingdom and kingdom of God is revealed in full. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. those who will help serve to come forward and be ready as we, all of us, a people of God's grace, pray the prayer which Christ taught us in whatever word or language we know it best, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen friends the body of christ broken that we might be whole in the mystery of God's grace. And this, the cup of salvation, God's love poured out for all and for many in the forgiveness of sins. We come and receive it with thanksgiving. The Holy Communion meal, again, is open to all who want to come. There will be two stations set up. You'll receive a piece of bread, and you can, you'll also receive an individual cup. All of it is, one of my colleagues calls it unfermented wine, a nice way of saying juice. And so uh, I invite you to come and receive. The ushers will help to direct.
Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this meal in which you have given yourself to us and made yourself available again. Take us in, beloved Christ, that you may live and love through us, and that we may live and love through you. Amen. At this time, we come to the time in our service where we offer before God our prayers and gifts. As always, I extend the invitation to remind you that there are many ways we give back to God. They go far beyond what can be offered in an offering plate. All of the ways in which we share love and kindness with one another and witness to God's justice in the world, these are all a testimony and a giving back of our lives before God. So the invitation, as always, is to live and give generously in all the many ways that you are able to. If you have a prayer that you want to offer to the full community, there are yellow prayer cards in the pews, and we invite you to use those. This time our ushers will come forward to collect some of the offerings we bring this day. God, receive these gifts that we offer today. Let your spirit be upon them and upon us, that the whole way in which we live and speak and act in our lives would be a witness and a gift giving back to you. All this we pray in the name of Christ, who prepares a way for us. May we live as those who prepare a way for others. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Continue in a spirit of prayer. These are the prayers of our community this day. Ted Lombard raises up a prayer for his friend Al who begins chemo on Thursday. We remember Al and pray for his healing. Lord, in your mercy. Ted and Nancy also remind us of our friends here, Dick and Ellis Walker, who are undergoing cancer treatment. And we remember Dick just began his treatment, a new round of it last week as well. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. And we remember Robert Weeks, who's not, who was planning to be here, but unable to be with us today. We pray for quick healing of what we hope is just an ordinary cold, but we miss him as he was planning to be with us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also pray continued healing for uh, Dick Yost, who had surgery this past week. Uh, last I heard, it went well, but we pray for his continued recovery. Lord, in your mercy. We sing Alleluia. We give our thanks and our praise to you. For we remember the ways at which you are at work in our world. We are bold to pray that we would witness your healing and reconciling work in our world in more, more and many and varied ways. And so we pray for the whole of creation and the delight that it brings to us and that we might live as good stewards so that creation can continue to delight. We pray for nations, for those that have known only uh, poverty or war or division or threat, for those for whom uncertainty about what tomorrow brings feels much more weightier than it sometimes can. Lord, we pray for witnesses who are in that space and for a way that leads to abundant life for all people. Help us to be people of our own prayer. We pray for communities divided. We pray for the long list of communities where it feels every day another is added where gun violence or other acts of violence have made the news. We pray for the communities that don't make the news, but are still know what it is to be hurting, wounded, divided. For those places where we long for healing so that our communities can be places of good neighborhoods, where we can all know belonging, can know welcome, can know peace. We pray for our own households, and we lament that there are households where belonging and peace are not a part. We pray for healing in those spaces. And we pray for good neighbors or teachers or friends who will notice when there is not peace. And will do what they can to help to provide it. We pray for those, are, those whose names we've already raised up and those in our hearts, for we know that there are other prayers that we have that we carry with us, that we raise before you. We pray that we would surrender them at your mercy and that by your compassion you would work. For that is the hope, is that you are our God, who we are assured is already at work, preparing the way of your kingdom that will welcome us all. Make us people of that way. In the name of Christ and with the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his I invite us into our closing hymn and I invite us to rise and body or spirit to sing. Uh, for those who are uh, all children or young at heart among us who want to help to share the leftover communion meal, we just go right out this door, keep it open, share it with the birds. Anyone who wants to help do that is invited to do so. Uh, as we sing a few verses in, I will come back up, I will take out the candle, I will come back and I will invite you to come up with me at that time. We'll do the benediction and we'll share the communion. That was a lot of instructions for only a few of you. 
watch me to do this would have been faster. Let us stand and sing. benediction includes again words from poet and pastor Steve Garnis Holmes. He reflected on Jesus' comfort to his disciples and he wrote this, you won't be alone no matter where you are, no matter what you choose or others choose for you, what is forced upon you or is draining out of you, I will have taken you into myself. This is the way. You do not go on the way I take you, I take you into myself and I go the way as if I am with child, I carry you everywhere you go, for I am the way, I am life. Dear friends, do not let your hearts be troubled, head back, feet up, as you allow our mother and father God to bear you together everywhere you go. Amen.